Hi guys, Mr. Hind here again. Welcome back to my Classics channel. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Temple of Zeus, located in the Sanctuary of Zeus at Olympia, in the northern region of Greece, known as Elis. Now this sanctuary was the birthplace of the ancient Olympic Games, which first kicked off in 776 BC, and Zeus's temple stands right in the heart of the whole sanctuary. So we're going to start this video off by first of all looking at the architecture of the temple, and then we'll consider its decoration after that. The main function of this temple was to house the cult statue of Zeus, and this was a famous Chris Elephantine statue, designed by the sculptor Phidias. It was so famous in fact that it was considered as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and we'll look at it in more detail a little later on. The architect of the temple was known as Libon of Elis, and he's from Elis, he's from the region in which Olympia was located. The temple was constructed between 472 and 456 BC, and it's a huge temple. It's 27 metres in width and 64 metres in length. It really does dominate the entire space, it's a focal point of the entire sanctuary. In fact, the Parthenon was built to outdo this temple. It's been designed on a typical east to west orientation, with the front of the temple over there on the eastern side, and the back over here on the west. And it's got a fairly standard layout as well. It has a back porchway known as an Ops of the Domos over here, an inner room known as a Naos over here where the uh, cult statue would be housed, and you have the front porchway there known as a Pronaos. So just to throw even more Greek architecture terminology at you, this is known as a hexastyle temple, so called because you have six columns running across the front and six columns running across the back. It's also known as peripateral because columns run across all four sides of the temple. There's 13 that go down the left hand side and 13 down the right. The order of architecture that this temple belongs to is known as Doric, and that's because it has these wide, thick, heavy set columns here with no ionic scrolls at the top. It's also Doric because this space here is not a continuous sculpted narrative as you would find on an Ionic temple, but has rather been broken up by these sculpted square slabs known as metopes, and these dividers here known as triglyphs. Now it's very common for Greek temples to be decorated on the exterior with scenes from mythology, and this temple is no exception. However, whereas the game shows pretty much every single temple having its metopes as the labours of Heracles, that actually was the subject matter on this temple. And that's fitting subject matter, because Heracles was the son of Zeus. Now Heracles completed 12 labours, so there would have been 6 metopes on the front and 6 metopes at the back. However, the game just likes to fill space by generically showing the labours of Heracles just replicated time and again, so you've got more than 6 on the front here in the game. Now we're going to take a look at 3 of these metopes that come up quite commonly on the GCSE and A level courses. The first one we're going to take a look at is this one here, which is Heracles fighting against the Cretan bull. Now this is quite a popular metope because you've got the chiastic composition in the middle and that means that the figures create a cross shape as they overlap. And notice that Heracles and the bull are pulling away from one another whilst looking at each other at the same time. Another popular metope on this temple is this one here, it's the one I'm actually hanging off in the game as well, which is Heracles holding up the sky for Atlas as he fetches the apples of Hesperides. Notice that you have Athena on the far left of the metope there, holding up the sky with ease, and she's just got one hand. Um, you have Heracles in the middle, straining under the weight of the sky and the cushion on his shoulders there. And on the far right you have Atlas bringing back the apples. Notice the dominant verticals in the composition of this metope. In fact, that's only really broken up by the horizontal of Atlas's arms. Now, the most famous metope on this temple is this one over here, which is Heracles cleaning the Augean stables. And it's most famous for the people of Elis, because allegedly this labour took place quite close to Olympia. The story goes that he had to clean these filthy stables in one day, it was an impossible task, so Heracles diverted the banks of a nearby river, and as such was able to clean the stables with relative ease. In the composition of this metope, you have um, Athena on the far right hand side, and um, Heracles on the left, and there's quite um, dominant diagonal lines in this, with Heracles sweeping away the mess that's left and um, Athena pointing to whatever's left, almost as if to say you've missed a bit. Now this is actually out of order in the traditional um, story in the labours of Heracles, and the people of Elis have decided to put it on the far right hand side of the eastern side of the temple in order to draw focus to it, um, not only emphasising um, the importance of this story but also its proximity to Elis there, on, um, being in pride of place over here. Now above the metopes you have this triangular sculpted space here known as a pediment. 
And whereas the game just shows us with generic scenes from mythology, in reality we would have had the moments before a chariot race between Pelops and Onimaeus. And to explain that story, I'm just going to look out over the Hippodrome, over here. The story goes that Pelops wanted to marry Hippodamia. Now, Hippodamia's father was Oinomaeus, and he was king of Elis. In order to marry her, he had to beat Oinomaeus in a chariot race. Pelops does so, but he cheats. He replaces one of the pins in the axle of Oinomaeus' chariot with wax, so when the race gets started, Oinomaeus is thrown from his chariot and dies. So, whilst Pelops wins Hippodamia's hand in marriage, he's also considered a murderer at the same time. To look at the composition of this pediment, we're just going to jump down to the ground here and look at it from down here. So when we look up at that triangular space, we notice that the most amount of space in the pediment is right in the middle, and that's called the apex. And in the pediment we would have had Zeus standing there, but he's unbeknownst to the other figures in the pediment. To the left we have Oinomaeus and Sterope, um, who is uh, Oinomaeus' wife, and on the right we have um, Pelops and Hippodamia. Um, so they really take up the most amount of space in this pediment. Notice how none of the figures in the pediment are touching one another. Um, there's no real action. It's a very tense, quiet scene before the chariot race is meant to take place. In fact, the only action that's really going on is Oinomaeus on the left as we look at it, who um, seems to have his hand up in an authoritative pose, um, shouting out the rules that are going to take place in this chariot race. Um, these major characters are flanked by horses and chariots on both sides and um, on either side of the chariots we then have minor figures. For example we have the anxious seer over here who's a figure that is some sort of prophet, um, he can see into the future, he uh, can obviously see that something bad is going to happen to Oina Mouse, he's got his hand to his mouth and he looks very worried about um, the ensuing chariot race. Um, but in complete contrast to him we have this um, young boy here who's just playing with his toes, totally disinterested in the action that's taking place. Now that pediment is a complete contrast to the pediment over here on the western side. On the western side you would have had the Centromachy, which is the centaurs fighting against the Lapis, the centaurs being those half beast, half human um, figures. Um, the story goes that they were invited to a wedding uh, from the Lapith king Perithus and his wife uh, or his bride Diadomina. Um, the centaurs get a bit carried away at the wedding, they've never had wine before and they get drunk and they take off with all of the women and um, they cause this massive fight. Um, so if we jump down and look at the com composition of this pediment, what we have here is Apollo standing right in the middle of it and we have various different battles between um, centaurs and lapis. For example here you have a centaur making off with um, the bride Diadomina. Um, notice here how all the figures are grappling with one another, it's a very chaotic scene, there's a hell of a lot of violence here. Um, look at the faces, for example, of the um, centaurs straining, um, and um, they, they seem, their beards seem unkept and raggedy to try and um, sort of accentuate their sort of barbarian-like representation. It's in complete contrast to the quiet yet tense scene that we have coming back over onto the eastern side. So that really concludes our analysis of the exterior decoration on the Temple of Zeus. But I want to take a minute now just to have a look at the Chris Elephantine statue of Zeus here. Now, Chris Elephantine means a gold and ivory statue. And this is the statue that was designed by Phidias, one of the most famous Greek sculptors of his day. It's quite easily identifiable as Zeus. I mean, he sat on a throne. It's in his temple. He's got this staff here, which on top has got the staff over there on the right which has got the eagle on top and as I'm climbing on over here we have Nike the goddess of victory as well. So all of this goes some way to um, showing off their um, Zeus's power and authority. So it's kind of easy to see why this was later considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. So that really concludes our analysis of the Temple of Zeus and um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for checking out.